Anyone looking to get a laser engraver or that has one needs to think about what this video is about, fume extraction. Hey everyone, my name is Sam and welcome back to SamCraft. In today's video, I'm gonna bring you guys along with me as I put in my fume extraction or smoke extraction systems here in my workshop at LaserTown. I'm gonna be installing a six inch duct for a CO2 laser, and then I'm gonna be installing a four inch duct with inline fans, a couple of different fittings to address the smaller diode lasers that I have. So if you're interested in this or wanna just otherwise hang out with me in my shop, stick around. I thought brushless motors weren't supposed to have issues like this. This tool's not that old. Okay, I've been fiddling with this thing for about 15 minutes. It's not going to start. It's been getting worse and worse on me, and even though it's a brushless motor, um, it's still, I don't know, it's acting up. So, I guess what I'll do is just go get a 4 inch hole saw. I thought I had one. Apparently, I have every size but a 4 inch, so might as well get it and add it to the collection, right? Plus, it'll make this a lot easier and cleaner of an install. So, Let's go spend some money. Why not? Never fails. Battery will die when you need it to work.
This is the temporary fume extraction for the Vitor. Just some two inch PVC I put together and taped the flex hose from the enclosure too. It worked good though, but it's time for something better. If I remember right, the Atour has a three inch outlet. So I purchased a four inch to three inch reducer. So I'm gonna see if it'll fit over top of that. And if so, I'll be able to cut this down to fit and fit better in the space. So here's a look at the flex hose coming out of the Atour's enclosure. And here is the four inch to three inch adapter I got. Let's see if it will fit. Looks like it will. Awesome. So the Atours hose fits on this adapter, which will then go into a flexible rigid piece that I'll make into another 90 degree elbow and attach into the bottom of the T I just installed. I'm also going to take the time to shorten the length of corrugated pipe coming out of the Atour because honestly, I don't need one that's about six feet long like it is. So I'll go ahead and cut that down to size and we'll put it all together. Actually, I just came up with a better solution. I just put the reducer in the bottom of the T and I'm just going to hook the flex hose from the Atour straight to that reducer. It saves me from having to put this into place, saves it for something else down the road, and just makes things simpler overall. Alright, I have my flexible ductwork put in place and as you can see it is kind of just hanging out there It's a rigid flex pipe. So it's kind of nice. I don't want to lock it down I don't want to attach it to my work surface just yet because this whole area is still kind of in flux I think it's gonna work fine though It is staying there and I can move it around and get it close to the laser and use it when I need be when I'm not using the atom stack laser I have this little four inch duct cap and I can fit it over the end of it That way the airflow is more dedicated to the Otour versus the atom stack and it should kind of help with airflow that way. I'm not really worried about the fan running and losing air through the Otour and not getting the atom stack. Honestly, the fan has a pretty high rating and we're not talking about heavy dust extraction like with woodworking. We're just talking about fumes and smoke. And honestly, you just need a little bit of airflow to just direct it, flow it, and get it out of the way. Since this fan and the one for my CO2 laser are just direct connect, they don't have any switches, I'm going to be using some of these remote controlled switch things that I've had for a couple of years. This is an Ecticity brand. I got it off of Amazon. You have three of these. Well, okay, I have two of these, but it comes with three, and you also have a remote. You're able to click on, off, and turn things on and off. These are rated for 15 amps, so they're great for this kind of application. So what I'm gonna do is take the last two I have, put one at the CO2 laser's duct fan, put the other here at the little four inch fan, and at least that way I'll be able to remotely control, turn things off and on without having to plug them in and out of the wall.
Nice. Very, very handy. Highly recommend this little guy. So I have the Atom Stack laser going. It's engraving some wrenches here, some chromed vanadium, and it's doing great. The speed is 10 millimeters per minute or millimeters per second. At the same time, I'm going to hook up the Atour. I'm going to put a piece of wood in here and just get it going on a wood engraving. I want to test the smoke extraction of the Atour and the Atom Stack, both going at the same time. I expect it's going to work out fine, but I do want to test this out just to see how it really does do. So really quickly, I want to show you guys the huge benefit of having the grid waste board like I do on my lasers, like with the Atour. I just loaded up my Sandcraft brand because it's a nice dark image. I don't have the Lightburn file, I don't have my template loaded on this one particular file, but if I set my user origin here to the center, going over here on my waste board, I can look and see where I set that piece of wood. It is at center point X 12.5 y 7.5 so i can just simply set my origin tell the laser to move 12.5 7.5 use it set it and know that it's there that is a great use and real life example of how i can use a grid board here just plop something not get super picky and light burn and just set my origin and know that i'm good to go so i've got my coordinates put here i'm gonna click on go Now, over on here, I can tell it to set origin. There's a button right there. Now, when I tell it to go home, it goes home. And when I tell it to go to origin, right where I want it. So it's really hard to see that on camera, but it is taking every bit of the smoke out. There's no smoke smell, and even as I had the case open, doing some video back and forth, I could only barely, barely get a whiff of it. And that is great. That kind of wood is super smoky, so I don't use it a whole lot, but it's a perfect test of is it actually drawing air out while this other machine was going. Everything's open, wide open. Does it still have enough power? Absolutely definite win for the little vivo fan i'm very happy so i ran the tour with the case open you guys saw that on film and that was engraving on a piece of painted wood that is a situation where you're gonna have a lot of fumes and smoke coming out while i was in here watching that go of course with safety glasses on i didn't have any smoke or fumes coming out of the case that's awesome. That tells me that even with the lid open of the enclosure, it still had enough airflow going through my system to remove it all and keep it out of the shop. That is perfect. That is exactly what I want and what I needed from this setup. So I've been using my fume extraction for a couple of days now and I am extremely pleased with it. It does very, very well on removing not only the fumes from the Atom Stack laser here, but also the Atour. Whether or not the Atour is blocked off, it still does fine. The inline duct fan does a great job moving a high volume of air and it's not that loud, so that's great. I only briefly covered the fume extraction for the CO2 laser because that's going to be in a completely separate video. I just wanted to also show that in there to let you guys know I do have fume extraction on that machine and now I have one over here as well. Overall, this is a pretty low cost project. The fan was about 20 something bucks off of Amazon and the rest of the ductwork came from my local hardware store. So looking ahead to future expansions, I think I want to probably get some 4 inch blast gates. That way I'm able to easily shut off the Atom Stack or the Otours feed and if I want to add more piping down here for the X-Tool laser that I've got that I need to get set up, I can do that pretty easily as well. I think at that point, it'll be great to have the blast gates so I can dedicate all the airflow to whatever machine or machines I want and it'll just give me a lot more control over the situation. I'll be sure and update you guys whenever I do that. It's probably going to be with the X-Tool video that I'm working on. I have the D1 Pro 20 watt 2-in-1 kit 
and it is here and I'm starting to test it out and use it and we'll have a tool review video on it coming up in the next couple of weeks. Otherwise that's going to be it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed getting to see me address my fumes, my fume extraction, smoke extraction, whatever you want to call it, and make my shop space safer and better for whenever I'm using the laser engravers. If you got any questions or comments, you know what to do. Leave them for me down below. Otherwise, take care, and I'll see you guys next time in the workshop.